Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Basic Helper Duties. Today I'm going to show you guys how to grind the bead. But before that, I'm going to show you guys how to soften a tight space with the grinder disc and also how to cut open a tight space with the zip disc. Let's get started. So this is the same pipe from uh, last week that we cleaned up. This is 250 wall, and it's a good thing that this is not square because this is a good example of a weld that that will happen at some point in a, in a welder's career, helper's career, the whole, you will come across some spaces that aren't just perfect. Um, we always want to shoot for perfect because that's just how you get good quality of work is shoot for perfect, but it's not a perfect world and it's you're not gonna get a perfect space every single time, so we need to know what to do in case that happens. First thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to hit these tacks. This is where I started and this is where I pulled out. But most generally, especially on this thinner wall pipe, you normally just want to hit the starts. You don't want to go too deep though. You don't want to, if you go too deep, you're getting into the landing. If you remember last week we talked about the landing, you need something to weld to. So if you go in too far to, and you soften that landing, it will, it'll be hard to weld because you don't, it'll be like welding on paper is the way I like to put it. So, let's hit these starts. Use this hand to steady. It's nice and easy. Apply the pressure, take it off, look at it. Apply the pressure, look at it. Just hit the start. You guys can kinda see, see I can stand to go a little deeper. Let me get on this other side and show you. See? Stand to go a little deeper, but that's not bad there. You just don't want to go too much deeper because you don't want to get into your landing. You can see we're not, we're still on the bevel here on this side. You don't want to get into your landing down there, so I'm going to stop with that. Just your starts, unless the welder asks otherwise. Or you can ask him, you know, communicate with your welder. It's one thing that I've said in the uh, videos before and that I'm going to continue to say is just communicate with your welder ask him how he likes things done him or her and see how they like their starts hit so do that to all all your tacks depending on the size of the pipe will depend on how many starts make sure you look top to bottom all the way around to make sure you're getting all of them when it comes to cutting especially on thicker pipe I like to go ahead and soften it. That way you're not having to cut as much with the zip disc. So that's what I'm gonna do here. The main thing about softening is you just don't wanna soften it too much, uh, but you are trying to make that landing thinner. Like if it had a nickel landing, you're trying to make that landing, you know, almost nothing. That way they can actually penetrate it. What you'll do whenever they say soften the weld. That way they can get that bead in there easier. So soften it, and now we're going to cut it. So what I like to do once I have it softened, I'm gonna take this zip disc, I'm gonna do long strokes with it also, and kind of soften it as I go, kind of like scribing. I'm gonna scribe a certain section, either do the whole thing or just do part of it, but and ease into it nice and slow. So on this 250 wall, this is really too big of a gap. A lot of times, you most likely would not cut a 250 wall. I mean, that's a weldable, but it's it's really too wide. But I just wanted to show you guys how to cut a tight spot. After you cut it, you'll notice that landing is going to be pretty thick. So you'll actually want to go in with the grinder and soften that landing a little bit. Another thing you gotta be careful about cutting it too fast or whatever is them burrs. You know, if you guys have used a, a, a cutting disc to cut like anything else structural or whatever, or like a chop saw, it leaves a burr. Well, it does the same thing here. And that burr is on the inside and that's not good. You wanna get all them out. That's what help, cutting it slow is gonna help with that. And then running the zip disc back in there, kinda at a little bitty angle 
to, to get them burrs back off because if you were on a hard tie-in right now, you wouldn't be able to get these out like I'm doing from the inside. That's that. I won't go into too much more detail about how to cut, but that just gives you guys a general idea. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the bead in and then I'll show you guys how to grind it. Grinding is just like just like welding or anything else. Since you don't want to get out of the bevel, you want to be extremely comfortable no matter what you got. I don't care if you got to lay down. I mean, over time, you, you shouldn't have to. At Sometimes you still might have. Even after, I know helpers that have been helping for five, 10 years and they still lay down in certain circumstances to get that bottom the way that it needs to be, the way that their welder wants it. So whatever you got to do to get to each part of the weld to grind it properly. Remember, the most important thing is to stay inside the bevel. Something to remember if you are brothering along with somebody on, on bigger pipe, one helper starts on top, one helper starts on bottom. That just keep, keeps each other out of, out of each other's way. In a good scenario where you ain't gotta lay down or nothing, you can get on one knee like this, and uh, this will help you just stabilize yourself. Keep in mind, like I said, is, is long strokes. You might do little strokes to just to get the starts down real good or get the get the high spots down. You can do this number to help, but mostly try to work on caulking the grinder this way. I tried to keep the handle of this grinder close to the pipe at all times. That will keep your grinder from, from jumping or uh, just mostly keep it from jumping. Run it a lot smoother, not get in a bind. Go as far as you can. And once you can't do that, flip it around and keep the handle close to the pipe on the bottom. Because if you get too far out, it's gonna wanna it's gonna wanna come up like that. So keep the handle of the grinder close to the pipe all the way around, and that'll help with it jumping. Some welders like to leave, me included, like to leave a little bit of uh, meat in the bottom but mostly all of it you want to be clean but see there again this is a welder's personal preference that's how I like mine pretty clean there's a little bit of wagon track wagon track is those little black lines you can see there but but like in the bottom boy I'm a terrible photographer in that bottom quarter I left a little bit of more wagon track because that bottom is gonna burn out a lot easier. So to sum it up, get comfortable, take your time, and do not get outside the bevel. You do those three things, everything should be just fine. Don't worry about your speed, that will come with time. But I think that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next Friday, five o'clock central time. Go check out arosswelding.com if you guys have not already. And remember, learn something every day.